Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be looking at a new switch that is pretty unique to the Unify lineup, and that is the Device Bridge Switch. The switch came out a few days ago and is available for purchase at $299 USD. What makes this switch unique is that it could wirelessly uplink. So all you need to do is plug it into power and then you'll get a wireless uplink to it. We'll go over more of that once I get it into the Unify network application, but let's go ahead and get the box open. Here we have the device bridge switch and on the very front, we could see a picture of what it looks like. So we need to get this open and there is a pull tab down the side. Within the box, there only looks like there's two different units. So let's pull it out. I believe this one is the switch and that is the switch. And then the next one will be the power supply for it. We will go over a couple different power options for this switch. This is the power cord that comes with it though. The other things that come in the box, we have this mounting template and then we have the mounting bracket for it. Now on the switch to get it open, we have this little pull tab. There's a piece of plastic which is protecting it. And this is what the switch looks like outside of that protective packaging. It has that nice white finish. On the one side, we have a reset button and then we have our power intake. We also have a bunch of different PoE Plus ports. The one on the end, so this is port 8, is a 10 gigabit port. The rest of them are 2.5 gigabit. We also have our LCM, which will show us the signal strength to our AP, and this will use the Unify Auto Link to get it connected. Now, there is nothing on the back side of the switch, but on the bottom, we have our mounting bracket, and we can use DIN rails as well, and then we have a couple ventilation holes. The next step for us is to get this powered up. So I have the power cord plugged into power, and we're going to plug it in. And we should see that LCM turn on, which it is coming on. You'd see on the LCM, it says ready to be adopted. And I have no cables plugged in. So this could be adopted by Unify Autolink. And I see it on the Unify network application right now, ready for adoption. So let's head back to my computer. Back at my computer, we could see that the UDB switch at the bottom here is ready to be adopted. So we'll click to adopt. And this should take a minute and we'll do any updates that's necessary. The UDB switch is now adopted and fully updated. So let's click on it and look at the settings. Right at the top, we see where our ports are or port manager. Nothing is currently connected to the ports, but we will see our signal strength and our uplinking device. So we have the U7 Pro wall and we're getting a minus 50 dBm. Below that, we have our TX retries, and it's showing what we're currently connected to. We're on channel 37 of the 6 gigahertz at 320 megahertz. This does use STR MLO, so you could think about that as like they're aggregating them together. So your 5 gigahertz, as well as your 6 gigahertz, to give us more throughput. A quick note about the STR MLO, that isn't currently available with the firmware version that I'm running right now it will be released in a future firmware. It shows us our PoE in use, which we don't have any currently plugged in here. And we have 35 watts if we use the included adapter. If you buy the 210 watt adapter, it will give us 185 watts across the ports. At the bottom, we have our model IP address, MAC address, device, device mode. We have the uptime memory usage and then the load average. And then we have the mesh parent. So you can see this is connected to my middle AP at minus 51 dBm, and we can see the TX and the RX rates, which is just about three gigabits per second. It also shows us our air stats. And then if we go over to our insights, we could see the history of the UDB and the system statistics. We could do it at a week, a month, or we could do it at one day. Now over on our settings, we could give this switch a name if we'd like, and then we have radios and it shows mesh connect. Hovering over mesh connect, it says wireless meshing cannot be disabled until these devices are either removed or directly connected to your network using an ethernet cable. We also could force this to go to a mesh parent. So it's currently attached to the middle, but if we hit the drop down, we could tell it which AP that we want it to go to. Obviously for me, we want it on the middle one because we are getting the best signal strength there. Under the external power, we're gonna have to select if we're using the 60 watt or the 210 watt. I don't have the 210 watt, but when I deploy these, that is what I'll be buying as an extra. We have our IP settings, so DHCP or static, and then we have our manage, which is the same on pretty well every device. Let's now take a look at our port manager. Clicking on the port manager, we could see that we have the port diagram, the stats, and the VLANs. And this switch does allow VLANs just like any other Ubiquiti switch. So if we click on port one, we scroll down a bit, we could see our VLANs here. I'm gonna click on the VLAN, and then I'm gonna say port one is an IoT device, apply the changes. Maybe port two is a camera. So that's really nice that they included this. 
and didn't just let it be on the default or the native VLAN. One feature the switch doesn't have is link aggregation. So if we click on port six, we don't see any switching modes at all. We can't switch it to aggregation, but we can do ethernet port profiles. So if we click on manual, go ethernet port profile and select a new port profile, we'll call this VoIP slash IOT. We could have the native network being our IOT network. And then I'm just going to scroll down. I don't have a voice network, but we could go on to manual. We could go to voice VLAN, and then we could select the voice VLAN and apply the changes. Going back to that port six, we could now click on manual ethernet port profile. And then we have the different profiles that we've created. So it does allow multi VLAN per port. Let's now go ahead and run some speed tests. My internet connection is one gigabit down by about 50 up. I do have a fiber line that is three gig by three gig, but that is getting repaired. So I can't test that now, but I will make a short on my YouTube channel when I do have my fiber fixed. Looking at the UDB switch, we are getting minus 57 DBM now. That is sitting right beside me in this office. The switch it's connecting to is on my main floor. So one level down, I will bring that switch down to a computer that's sitting in that room, plug it in so it's closer to the AP and we'll do another speed test. So I'm gonna bring up speed test and we're gonna press go. I was getting 822 down and 54 up. So that was pretty well maxing out my connection. The download speed could have been a little bit faster. So I'm gonna go move the switch down to the main level. And we're also gonna do an open speed test for the local network to see how quickly it could go. The UDB switch is now on the same level as my middle access point and seeing the switch, we could see that we are getting minus 35 DBM. Now I'm gonna go over to the computer that is plugged into that switch. Okay, and this is the computer that is plugged into the switch and I have speed test brought up and I'm gonna press go. All right, and it looks like my ISP was being generous and giving me more than a gigabit per second. So we are 1,086 megabits per second and the upload maxed out at 54 because it is a coax connection. Now we're gonna do a test with open speed test, which is running on a server within my network. We'll now run an open speed test, which is running on a server that's connected with the 10 gigabit connection. The computer that's plugged into the UDB switch is on a 2.5 gigabit connection. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna press start and see the results that we're getting. All right, and the download speed was just about two gigabits per second. And the upload speed was just about 2.5 gigabits per second which would max out that network interface card. And I think that is pretty good speeds. And that's gonna be my video on the UDB switch. And I really do like this switch and I could see myself installing a lot of these. Currently we don't do residential cameras, but I could see myself doing them a little more now with this switch. We could grab one, plug it into the garage, and then we could spread out cameras around the front house. It's gonna make it a lot easier. This would also make for a great kiosk switch. Say you have an event space and you need to get some debit card readers online. I think this will be a great option for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the UDB switch. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.